Alright guys, so today I wanted to give my thoughts on The Order 1886. Now this is a game that I recently took some time to play, and obviously it is a very short game, so there was no need for me to make multiple videos on it. I was able to finish it in a very short period of time. Not only that, I did go back and actually platinum the game because it was a very easy platinum. Now the first time I played the game I actually streamed it so that's another reason why I went back to play it a second time so I could really focus in on it and pay much more attention to it. And the first thing I want to say in regards to the Order 1886 is wow. I say that because there is just so much potential with this game. Ready at Dawn I think did an absolutely phenomenal job at building up a world and establishing lore and establishing characters and it was all very believable and very interesting and it had a lot of seem seemingly a lot of depth to it that was ripe for exploration potentially in future titles but at the same time I also say wow because there is a lot within the game that isn't so great for example the pacing of the game the pacing of the game was extremely slow and I certainly could see now why there was a lot of people who didn't enjoy their time with the game. Some of the cutscenes were way too long. Uh, the gameplay to cutscene ratio just seemed completely out of balance. And then when we actually think about the gameplay itself and the overall depth of the gameplay, it was relatively shallow if I'm being honest. Now that doesn't mean the gameplay that was there was necessarily bad, but the number one thing I had to make sure to keep in mind while playing through the Order 1886 is that when this game came out, it was sold for $60. Now, I got it for, I think, about 10 bucks, which felt like kind of a steal, if I'm being honest, and it felt certainly worth that $10. But my opinion on the game would be completely different if I was hyping it up, excited for it, paid $60 for it and this was what I got in the end and I can understand why some consider it a failure now did I enjoy my time with the game I did honestly there was a lot here that I think ready at dawn just did an absolutely phenomenal job with if I'm being honest the first and most obvious thing has to be the way the game actually looks the graphical fidelity of the game and the detail within the game is on a level that I don't think I've really ever seen before. Uh, knowing that this game came out towards the beginning of the generation or close to midway through the generation, I think it released, what, February of 2015, and knowing that it just released on a base PS4, I remember booting the game up and thinking, does this game have a PS4 Pro patch? And people let me know that, no, it doesn't. And I was just absolutely shocked by that. I was like, wow, this game looks stunning. I couldn't believe it. Not even just the graphical fidelity and the detail within the world itself, but the character models. Galahad, uh, Percival, um, Lafayette, and Agrain, I, I think that's her name, or Isabeau. Um, they, they looked amazing honestly and that's another thing i do want to take a second to talk about as well is i think ready at dawn did a really good job at fleshing out these characters and giving them um an actual personality and it made me really interested to want to know more about this world of the order 1886 this steampunk world where there's lichens and ha you know half breeds and vampires and there's there's this order that's been established since uh, you know the time of King Arthur and it just it just has so much potential you know and it's just so unfortunate to me to think that Ready at Dawn just wasn't able to really nail all of the aspects of the game uh, you know they weren't able to really flesh out the gameplay itself to make it so that by the end of it you feel like not only did you have enough gameplay there but there was depth to it there really wasn't that much depth i'd say the most um the most engrossed i've gotten with the gameplay itself was probably that segment where you're on the bridge and you're just taking on waves and waves of enemies and you have to like just continue to push forward uh, but that's pretty much what you do throughout the entire game even when you are facing the half breeds except for the occasional boss battle which there was i think only two in the game itself 
you know, you're just shooting them and then you run up to them and you do a QTE. And that is another problem with this game, honestly, is that there were just way too many QTEs. And that was something a lot of people I saw complaining about as well. And I thought, uh, maybe they're exaggerating. It can't be that bad. But as I played through the game, I guess it was Ready at Dawn's way of trying to ensure that the player always felt engaged. But I would say that adding QTEs to a, you know, what is supposed to be a AAA $60 game like this doesn't make up for the lack of gameplay and it doesn't make up for the poor pacing that's just just the truth of the matter in fact for me it felt like a lot of times they just kind of got in the way because a lot of times they just randomly pop up now the one area that i think some people really had a problem with that i didn't have so much of a problem with were the boss battles that i'm referring to there was really only two of them and they were basically qte battles but i didn't mind them too much because they did feel pretty engaging although i will say that it would have been nice to either have more of those or if they were you know going to expand the game more which it seems like they weren't able to unfortunately i would have liked to have had a different variety in how they approached the boss battles but you know i can't say i had a bad time with the game uh, is the game worth ten dollars fifteen dollars yeah I do not think Sony should have tried to sell this game at $60 at launch. I think that was the biggest mistake, and I think that's honestly what potentially destroyed any chance of us getting a sequel. That's the thing that really bothers me the most after playing The Order 1886 is just how engrossed I felt like I was getting in the world and how interested I was uh, you know, in, in, in the characters, and, and I was thinking, man, like... It would be great if they could do some type of prequel where we could see more of the uh, journeys that uh, you know these characters went on together because you can tell they have a history with one another, uh, just the history of the Order itself, the history of that world. It, it There's just so much there, and I think Ready at Dawn did such an amazing job. They just couldn't really execute it, you know what I mean, in terms of uh, how do you balance out a, a AAA game with, uh, you know, you want to have a a really heavy deep story you want to have a lot of cinematics how do you balance that out with ensuring that there's enough gameplay and ensuring that there's enough depth to that gameplay um, you know if if the game ended up being maybe like 20 hours long and they they kept it the way it was right now with the poor pacing and the uh, you know the the shorter gameplay segments that maybe could have been even worse, but this is where it, it almost seems to me that most of the development time, and I could be completely wrong on this, I'm just making an assumption, it seems that most of the development time may have went into making the game look as good as it possibly could, and I think that if there's anything we can all agree on is that the game looks really good, but at the end of the day, we do have to acknowledge this is a video game. You know, and some people were saying that they think the Order 1886 is just like an interactive movie, an interactive cutscene, and uh, just a show a showpiece made by Sony. And I understand all of those criticisms. And while I don't feel as strongly about it as that, I can agree that it was not. It is not a sixty dollar game, and I would just absolutely love for Sony to maybe give Ready at Dawn a second chance, give them the ability to expand their team, give them more time, maybe give them even a bigger budget to be able to fully realize the potential that's here with a game like The Order 1886. And that's what, again, bothers me the most, is as much as I want to say, like, this game was amazing and this game was awesome, I can't say that because it's not that. It's not a masterpiece by any stretch of the imagination. I also don't think it's a terrible game either. There are a lot of people that I th think feel that the order 1886 is a terrible game i cannot call it a terrible game but what i can say is that the potential for it to be a great game if ready at dawn was able to continue with this universe especially looking at the story and the way it ended it set itself up truly for a a sequel it really did if you get that it's not really a secret but that final cutscene that plays I think like uh, close to halfway through the credits or a quarter of the way through the credits, you can see that they are seriously setting up Galahad to be a character that you're, you're going to play as through multiple games. And I love the characters. I think Galahad is an awesome character. I think his, uh, his group there and, and especially the way he got uh, pretty much disconnected from the Order because there's just a lot of corruption going on inside of it. It, it, it honestly got me like really invested. Like I want to I wanna know more. I want to continue this. You know what I mean? I want to I want to see what happens next 
with Galahad and uh, and Agrain, you know, um, and it's, they're seemingly having some type of relationship there or wanting to have a relationship. It, it really, it's a shame. It really feels like a shame, you know. I, I wish that Sony would give Ready at Dawn another chance. I wish that they would do more with the Order 1886. It really bothers me to think that this is an IP that Sony's just not going to do anything with. You can tell... You can tell with this game that this that Sony did have a lot of hope for it, and it seemed like they were trying to push it to be the next big uh, PlayStation franchise, potentially. And maybe it fell flat in a lot of areas, but I don't know. I feel like it just, there's too much here. I think Ready at Dawn put too much into this game to just not do anything with it. But unfortunately, the reality of the situation seems that they're not going to do anything with it. That doesn't mean that they won't in the future. There's a lot of people I've seen express how much they like the game uh, for a lot of the same reasons that I mentioned here, and they hope to see a continuation of it at some point in the future, and maybe they'll do something with it during the PlayStation 5 generation. But as far as I know, and as far as we can see, I'm not really holding out hope for it. But to finish off this video, and to kind of sum things up, The Order 1886 is an absolutely amazing looking game. And it does a great job in establishing a world and with world building and the characters and just the atmosphere, the environments. It just knocks it out of the park. The voice acting, something else I forgot to mention, the voice acting and the performances in this game were absolutely top notch. All of these things, Ready at Dawn just knocks out of the park. But unfortunately, we do have to acknowledge this is a video game and it was sold at $60 and the gunplay itself was solid. It was a pretty decent cover-based third-person shooter. I liked the variety in weapons. I think that they did an absolutely great job with that as well. I think the arc gun was easily my favorite. That was just so fun to use. And that's something that they could have expanded upon with a sequel, but it seems like we're not going to ever get that. But overall, it was pretty basic. It was pretty simplistic in its gameplay, and a lot of it felt pretty heavy, uh, sometimes a little bit clunky, but the pacing of it was really not good. There was just a lot of uh, QTEs that felt like they just kind of got in the way and didn't really do anything other than annoy me. So, you know, overall, I had a good time with the game. Not, a, not an amazing time. This is certainly not on the same level as a lot of the other games I've played on PlayStation recently. And, you know, I hope you guys understand that I'm not trying to just, there's a lot of people who think that I will just say good things because it's a PlayStation exclusive. That's not the case here. I do have a lot of good things to say about the Order 1886, but there's also a lot of bad things as well. There's a lot of things here that really, I can understand why Sony, you know, probably thought we can't, we can't work with Ready at Dawn anymore because they, they can't produce top quality AAA games but I would argue that if they were given a second chance I think that they and they were given the chance to fix the mistakes and correct the mistakes that they made with the first game we could get something really special but yeah that's gonna do it for the video guys I know it was a lot but I you know there's just a lot of different feelings I have towards the order 1886 the final thing I'll say is I hope one day we get to see something more from this universe that Ready at Dawn established with the Order 1886 because there's just too much here in my opinion to just let it wither away. It's it's just so full of potential and I hope it's not wasted in the long run but we're going to have to wait to see. At this point I'm going to ask you guys to let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. I will be interested to see what you guys have to say. Be sure to like the video if you enjoyed it. really helps it out. I also want to let you guys know that you are able to now join my channel if that's something you're interested in doing. It is a way for you to directly support me. Subscribe to the channel if you're new as well. Feel free to share the video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys, take care.